Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them out of bite-sized pieces. Today we got some pretty great stories about how firms or people are profiting from cryptocurrencies without investing directly into cryptocurrencies. First up, Soros Fund, New York Life, Morgan Stanley are among investors of 200 million in Bitcoin investment firm NYDIG. So we'll take a look at that on top of a $2 billion merger uh, Bitcoin miner Cypher going public backed by Fidelity and Morgan Stanley. So some more of the traditional market players are getting involved into our space without really directly getting involved. And finally, we're going to take a look at what is going on just with this uh, Theta gas or T-Fuel and uh, what is going on with the uh, Theta token itself as it skyrockets in a very short amount of time. So we'll take a look at these three stories, but first take a look at what's going on in the market. So today we've got it March 11th. Uh, 8.30 a.m. Houston, Texas time, still here at the investment property, finishing up some final touches, and uh, off we go. It's been a pretty great uh, couple of weeks. Got everything uh, set up and going, and we have it rented for now the next uh, two and a half months. So we're pretty excited about uh, our prospects here, and uh, looks like it was a pretty good deal. Um, what I'm going to do is actually at the end of this video, I'm going to link one of uh, the videos I did previously about uh, Airbnb and investing. This isn't investment advice. These are just the things that uh, me and my wife do uh, for uh, alternative incomes. And uh, so far, it's pretty good. And just like I talked about yesterday, uh, as this pandemic really starts to wind down and people get more vaccinations and uh, everything starts to open back up, people are going to want to travel. And what do they want to do? They need to stay somewhere. So if they want to go in hotels, that's fine. Or they can stay in one of our homes, uh, and that's just uh, how I see things moving forward. Anyhow, uh, this is what we have for the market itself. So let me first of all let me blow this up, and uh, here's what we have. Uh, still, everything's going along swimmingly. Uh, Fifty-six, fifty-seven thousand almost as Bitcoin uh, jumps like two and a half percent or so, and the last hour just one and a half percent. And uh, my friend George is uh, he's saying he actually called it. He goes today. It's going to drop to 54,000, and by the end of the day, it'll be at 60,000. So if he makes these predictions, which he's usually correct, I don't know how he gets this information, but uh, we'll see what happens. George, uh, great job. Uh, Ethereum's down a little bit, uh, but we're looking at $1,800. Still hasn't hit that $2,000 high as before, but here we are. Binance Coin, just on an absolute tear, 307, up 7%, 10% in the last hour. And just as we talked about a couple of days ago, uh, you can stake Binance Coin and get like 27%. The devil is in the details. Uh, you have to, there's different tiers for what you can actually uh, put in as far as the, the, the Binance token. And it starts at like 9%, then it goes up to 12, 16%, and then finally 27%. But uh, it's it's really limited in what you can do, and in my opinion, it's just a great marketing ploy to get people to you know go over there and buy the Binance coin. I just don't see that as sustainable. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments section, but I just don't see 27% uh, sustainable for Binance coin in any way, shape, or form. Uh, Tether's Tether, nobody really cares. Cardano's uh, so far so so. Let's just take a look at what the big the big numbers are. Huh? That's what everybody cares about. There was no, not really too much coming down here, except for Hedera Hashgraph. I know there's a, another partnership uh, listing that just came about, so watch out for that one, 31%. I don't own that, uh, but uh, looks like a pretty good project, pretty smart people involved. And then uh, BAT, you're in finance, eh, not so much. And then uh, where are we with going up? It's kind of funny, Celsius Network has uh, really taken a tumble. Down the number 63 spot at 526. My big pick, Voyager, is right beside him at 574. So uh, that's what's happening right there. Swissborg, a uh, friend of the show, they're doing really great. I mean, I remember they were just like 73 cents just a couple weeks ago. Now they're at buck 54, so good for those guys. Uh, Chili's is in that top 50 spot. Chili's is a pretty great token. Um, it really hasn't hit my radar so much because it's all about uh, interacting with uh, sports sports fans and they can do voting for their, their favorite sports teams on the blockchain. So um, Chile is when it gets to, uh, to America. I think it's going to just absolutely explode uh, over here and uh, we'll see how it works. So it's one of those few ones that actually does that. So watch out for that one. And then, of course, our darling of the show, Theta Fuel, is up 63% in 24 hours. 63%. Why is that? I'm going to tell you exactly why. But first, let's get into today's uh, top story and see what's going on. So I just want to go over these quickly because uh, 
these are great stories about what's going on with Bitcoin, but I think the bigger stories are what's going on below Bitcoin. What's going on with Ethereum and Cardano? And we've, we've covered a lot of those things, the EIP-1559 for, uh, Card for uh, Ethereum, Cardano and their uh, decentralized finance play, uh, Goganera, the Merry Hard Fork, and all the things that are coming about uh, with, with Cardano. But today, we'll just do a quick one about Bitcoin, what's going on there, and then, of course, the one about Theta. So this was interesting to me because I'm always fascinated to see what smart money or, you know, the institutional players are actually doing. And this is a pretty smart move. Uh, it was not investing directly into Bitcoin, but the prospects or the mechanics of what's going on behind the scenes. And it's just the same way as like when there was the uh, uh, gold rush in the 1800s, uh, a lot of people didn't get rich on gold. What they got rich on was selling pickaxes and prospecting gear and food and water and all those things to all those people that had, you know, gone west uh, for the California gold rush. And uh, those are the ones that made a lot of money. So when we take a look at this, we can see these smart players, these uh, companies looking at and go, you know what, really not concerned or really pegged to Bitcoin. But if we can get behind these huge companies that uh, are doing these things, we can make a lot of money, and that's exactly what they're doing. So don't be confused. This is what's going on. So Soros Fund, New York Life, Morgan Stanley. So what's happened here? Well, Soros Fund Management, George Soros, New York Life, and Morgan Stanley have joined Stone Ridge Holdings, Mass Mutual, FS Investments, and Bessemer Venture Partners to invest in Bitcoin-focused company NYDIG. And, um, you know, they're just putting their, their money behind it. Like, you guys do whatever you want to do, uh, but we'll invest into your company you do your investments, and then we'll just sit back and take some rewards on top of that and all their fees. So sure. According to the announcement, a 200 million growth capital round was led by Stone Ridge Holdings Group, Morgan Stanley, New York Life, Mass Mutual, Soros Fund, and FS Investments. That's the official announcement. Soros Fund man Management is chaired by George Soros, one of the history's most successful financiers. You can say whatever you want to about him in the comment section. I know you will. New York Life Insurance Company is the third largest life insurance company in the U.S. and the largest mutual life insurance company in the country. And the rest of it is just going over the same thing over and over again. So I just found it interesting that, again, these companies are like, we don't want to hold and buy Bitcoin per se, but we want to invest in these companies that do it and we will indirectly profit. And then maybe on later down the road, they will actually get into it. So don't be confused about what's going on. These are just companies that are playing in the background. On top of uh, this one, $2 billion merger, Bitcoin uh, miner cipher is going public, which this is a, it's a fast one. Um, it's a fast one because of how fast they're actually going public because it's a, um, uh, what they call a SPAC, a special purpose, let me just highlight this, a special purpose acquisition company. And here's what's happening. It's happening. The transaction is expected to close in the second quarter. So it's happening just like this. That's all right. Let me just do everything again. Great, just when my class starts. Fantastic. Let me blow this up real quick. So, uh, this acquisition will provide the merge entity with gross cash proceeds of $595 million, which includes $425 million from investors, including Fidelity management and research company and Morgan Stanley's Counterpoint Global. So again, interesting to, to, to say the least that I remember when uh, you know Morgan Stanley and all these uh, big, large institutions would always talk about uh, the cryptocurrency space as it's just a fad, it's tulip mania, it's not gonna last, it's just a bubble. It's always in a bubble, right? We're always in a bubble. Are we in a bubble in stocks? Are we in a bubble in real estate at some point? We're always in a bubble in somewhere, sh shape and form. So. When I see these uh, big players getting in, I'm like, just couldn't resist, could you? But uh, it's just true. Um, time marches on. And when you have these 
great uh, outcomes uh, coming about as far as like the cryptocurrency space, you can see why the bigger companies just cannot uh, avoid it. I mean, when you're looking at these things over like the last 10 years, um, the best performing asset class uh, right now uh, was Bitcoin over the last decade. I mean, with, with, a, with a couple of years there that weren't so hot, but the last decade, you could not beat it uh, as far as like investing in a thing. So these companies just, they just can't ignore it. And uh, I think a lot of their uh, shareholders are probably asking them, why aren't you into this? Anyhow, the merge company uh, named Cypher Mining is expected to be listed on NASDAQ on the new ticker symbol uh, CIFR. JP Morgan Securities and Wells Fargo Securities are serving as financial advisors on the deal to good workers and Cypher Mining, respectively. Again, when you dig into it and take a look at who's behind everything that's going on, you realize that uh, these old institutions cannot resist. The new entity will be established on an uh, industrial scale Bitcoin mining company. Uh, Cypher Money explaining that its goal is to be the leading Bitcoin mining company in the US. Initially, four data centers are planned in Ohio and Texas. All right, one of the states I live in. And of course, it makes sense because a lot of different companies are coming to Texas because of the reduction in taxes. You see a lot of different companies from California are moving all the way over to Austin, San Antonio, Dallas, mostly Austin though, but it's just because of taxes. So why wouldn't they open up a uh, cryptocurrency mining uh, place over here in, in Texas? Not only in the fact that you know it's cheaper for taxes, but we have a lot of, uh, of wind and natural gas electricity here. So it's cheap, why wouldn't you do it? Anyhow, it's US-based data centers are planned to come online between Q4 uh, 2021 and Q2 2022. Total of just a ton of power. I'm not going to get into it. So uh, these are the things that are going on. I think, again, they can invest in the cryptocurrencies without investing in the cryptocurrencies. And this is just a gateway investment, honestly. Once they get into this and then they look at what's going on in the actual market, especially as we start to topple $2 trillion, which is right around the corner, right? $1.73 trillion, $5 trillion, $8 trillion, $10 trillion, if I say, if I dare say it then uh, they have to get involved and just start buying directly. Anyhow, let me just think in the comments section. Let's move on to our last piece. So, Theta token and T-Fuel, what the heck's going on? Uh, <laughs> T-Fuel surges 775% in five weeks. Not too bad. If you listen to Digital Dave over Crazy Cryptos, he's the one that's been talking about T-Fuel and Theta forever. And he's the reason why I got into it. So thanks, Dave. I appreciate it. But uh, here's what's going on and why this is going just uh, crazy. So Theta Fuel was created when the Theta mainnet launched in 2019. It's designed to be the operational token of the protocol, powering on-chain operations like sending payments and deploying smart contracts. Now, right now, uh, you can you can send payments. You can you can pay your your favorite uh, influencer over there on uh, the Theta network. But as far as deploying smart contracts, I mean, this is just I mean, it can happen. Just hasn't really happened and taken off yet, which is like a lot of things uh, going on right now. Like Cardano has that functionality, but really it's just kind of opening things up. And uh, we're kind of getting into that phase of what this can actually do. The rubber meets the road, right? Uh, a significant difference between Theta and other dual token models uh, is holders who stake Theta and validator and guardian nodes help secure the network and earn T fuel as a reward. So just as a little uh, refresher, um, we did a video over at danteacherscrypto.com uh, over on investing, or no, chapter five or module five, how do I, it's called how do I stake theta. It's very easy, you just download uh, this uh, GUI, this graphical user interface, uh, download, and then you can just start staking your unused band, not staking, but staking the, um, the theta, or actually now it's gonna be T-Fuel later on, and uh, what it does is it allows you to secure the network and then your unused bandwidth they can use and you earn uh, theta and now you're going to be uh, using T fuel. So that is essentially what it is in this little video up here. And I will link this in the description. It's at theta, thetatoken.org. But think about this. And I always talk about this. What are you doing right now? You're watching me. You're watching me on YouTube. Uh, what are a lot of people doing these days? Well, they're doing distance learning. They're doing distance meetings through Zoom. That takes a lot of bandwidth. YouTube takes a lot of bandwidth. What is the, one of the biggest uh, sports that is uh, growing in the world today? It's eSports. So uh, to stream all those things and just to actually watch those things, you're going to need a lot of bandwidth. And that's what Theta does. It allows you to set up a node. You, they can take your unused bandwidth. They can shoot it around all over the place uh, that uh, has poor bandwidth. <laughs> 
like myself in this home in uh, Houston. And uh, you can get paid in Theta and now in T-Fuel. So it actually works out pretty well. And of course, this company is backed by like Steve Chen, co-founder of YouTube. You've got uh, the validator nodes of Google, Sony, Samsung, Binance, Blockchain, Gumi, Gumi, how do you say it? And uh, it's got a lot of big people behind it. It's not competing with YouTube. It's working in conjunction with them. So I think it's going to be a massive play. And I think Theta is in the top, uh, I know it's in the top 20 right now. So this thing has really skyrocketed in there. Great. So where are we? Ah, uh, according to data from Theta Explorer, almost 58% of the 1 billion available Theta are staked in the network. Imagine that. 58% is staked. Theta is staked. If you take a look at uh, Cardano, you're looking at around 70, 80% is staked on the network. If you look at Ethereum, it's like 4%, 5% is being staked. So uh, take just do your own research on that one. Anyhow, um, on March 10th, I figure it's slowly increasing as the project attracts more attention. And then to finish up, following the launch of Theta 3.0 on April 21st, April 21st, Theta 3.0, token holders will be able to stake T-Fuel as another way to earn passive income and help secure the network. So right now, you can only stake uh, the Theta token. And when I got in, you needed, uh, I think it was, yeah, it was 10,000 tokens. Then they reduced it down to 1,000 as far as Theta tokens. And now they're going to open it up just to, you can stake T-Fuel, which is great. So if you like passive income, like I do, this is the easiest way to do these types of things. Uh, the upgrade will also introduce a new burning mechanism is essentially a network fee for using the Theta Edge. So again, the more that they burn, the more that the supply reduces. If the demand increases, what happens to the price? It goes up. And uh, that's the big thing. But I think the reason why Theta went up so much uh, lately is uh, because of this. There was a hard fork yesterday, uh, March 10th at noon Pacific Standard Time. But it, it's not a uh, people always in crypto, they, they hear a hard fork and they think Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, or then whatever, and Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin SV, or however that worked, I forgot. So usually these days, there isn't too many hard forks where you have two different splits of the chain and you have two different tokens and you get a bunch of, and you get two different tokens. Uh, and this one, it's just hard forks are just upgrades. That's essentially all they are. And that's exactly what happened. So I think people heard, they heard a hard fork, like I want to make some money, want to get some theta, and then whatever the new one is, but that's not how it worked. It was uh, the upgrade is focused on improving scaling and staking and reward distribution. User wallets and guardian nodes are safe to continue using normally. So that's the big thing. And that's really all it comes down to. So I have to tell you, I got to tell you, I got to tell you. <laughs> Let me find theta. Where are we? Theta network. Let me blow this up. Theta Network is number 15, top 15. Went up 24% in 24 hours, and we're looking at $7. Man, I remember when this, I remember when Theta was nothing. It was just, you know, one of those weird, wacky projects that were out there. So it's the same thing. Just go behind and take a look at, look at the white paper. What does it do? Does it have an actual use? Does it have an actual function? Take a look at the people, the team behind it, the people that are involved. And we just took a look at that real quick. And we actually, uh, on danteachescrypto.com, there's a section uh, called Do Your Own Research in one of the modules. And we actually, it was me and Ian Bellina, and we took a look at Theta for the five criteria. And we just kind of laid it all down of uh, you know why this was gonna be great. This was like six months ago. So go ahead and check the video out, but uh, I think it's going to be big. It's one of the uh, the holds that I have. And as you know, on this channel, I'm very biased to all, all the things that I hold and I talk about them a heck of a lot. It's because I hold them and uh, that's just the truth. So look, that is it for today. So first of all, you made it all the way in. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. If you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. That helps the channel tremendously. Also consider subscribing because a lot of things we talk about are time sensitive, especially with what's going on here. And uh, that is it. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.